Okay. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the November 15th, 2022 PTSA meeting at Clarksburg High School. Again, just to confirm, we have nine participants online, minus myself and Mr. Wusu, that is seven. There is five here, so additional five. So that's 12. No, wait, hold on. My math is off right now. 14. <laughs> Clearly, I did not go to high school. <laughs> Yes, seven, seven, right? Seven here? Yes, so 14 total. Please note that. <laughs> okay, so without further ado, I'm just going to share my screen. Hope you all can see my screen here. And in addition to Mr. Wusu, we have three special guests here with us. Just going to up their names here, and they are the team from the Bridge to Wellness, Ms. Danielle Griffin, Care Manager, Astrid Bedina, Youth Development Specialist, and Tanya Orozco, Mental Health Specialist. They will be presenting along with Mr. Wusu for the School Safety and Security, as well as Bridge to Wellness presentation after the meeting. So we're going to slide on through the meeting here so we can get to that, so we all can have a lovely evening at the end, especially since it's raining. <coughs> As with every PTSA meeting, we started off with the mission statement, and the mission statement of the PTSA is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. The agenda for today, for today. The screen is not showing. Oh, it's not? Yes, mine's. My Zoom is not operating. Thank you. I am just on all kinds of points right now. Can you see my screen again? Thank you, Darwin, for sharing that in the chat. Thank you, Team Bridge of Wellness, for letting me know. <laughs> again, let us start over. The first thing we have to do is we always have to share the PTSA mission statement, and that is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. Today's agenda is we're going to go over the board and committee openings, report of officers, principals connect, or that would be tying in with the presentation, Mr. Wusu. Okay, so we are going to push that principals connect to the presentation committee reports, delegate reports, cluster coordinator reports, any unfinished business, new business action items, and then the adjournment. If there are no objections, we are going to move to, we're going to move to accept and adopt this agenda. No objection. Please note we're adopting the agenda at 7.09 p.m. Thank you so very much. Meeting minutes will be provided for the next meeting in January 17th, 2023. We do not have a meeting in December. So we'll see you in the new year. <laughs> These are the following positions that are still open. We have a uh, committee chairs, which is the faculty student engagement, faculty representative, student representative, team for after prom. I believe I noted it here, but after prom meeting will start at November 20th. Please look out for that meeting link soon. Next line item is the report of the officers, which is the president, VP of education, treasurer, and secretary. Um, president reports, I will start here. President's report, we have started the process for the School of Excellence. We have we have sent over and then we have completed the questionnaire. We have 12 respondents so far as of November 14th, 2022, which is A-OK. -okay. Hopefully the next questionnaire and the survey that's sent out will have a lot more respondents. That's towards May 2023. Building utilization, we have had to do a new process for reserving buildings for our meeting. So we have submitted the request for today's meeting. We also need to create a user ID for the PTSA specifically to ensure that we're able to reserve through that MCPS special link for any events that we want to do. I believe that would be for after prom too, right? Yes, I would say yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, for building services. And then number three, we have reached out to local organizations, Nourish Now and the Indonesian American Association, not associate, um, 
To support the Clarksburg Can Food Drive, the food drive will be held on November 19th. Sign-up genus will be mailed out by tonight, so students can um, volunteer. We need about 10 to 15 or so. The day after, there is another organization, local organization. They are stationed in Gaithersburg, the Meaning USA organization. They're also working with Nourish Now to support a food drive, and they would need about five to six students. Last thing I've heard is that there is going to be the founder of Nourish Now and one of the executives of Nourish Now that will, that will be visiting that particular food drive on November 20th. So if you have any students who would like to sign up, please look out for that link. I will share it by tonight, or we will share it by tonight. There is also a week-long canned food drive for Clarksburg Can set up by Susan at the high school. It's at the front lobby entrance. I believe it's like by grade level, so every box is a grade. Um, if you could be so kind to let your students know so they can drop off any canned food drives. Again, we want to support all families so they can have a great holiday season. Um, the flyer will be shared later on, or it will be shared. It's already been shared by Mr. Rusu, so please be so kind to share that with uh, your students. And also, please be so kind to provide the canned foods for Clarksburg Can. I have heard they have an increase of over 100% for the need within the community, which covers Clarksburg, Germantown, and additional Ave County areas. Uh, finally, the last two items that we have contacted Montgomery County Police Department about the Every 15 Minutes program. I am awaiting their responses. I actually connected with Officer Dixon, who has a senior here in Clarksburg High School. So that was really nice. <laughs> That's a small world. <laughs> And MAD, the MAD organization has also reached out to support the substance use and the substance um, awareness program for spring in time for after prom. So we will reach out to them shortly. Hopefully we can do an assembly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for yeah, every 15 minutes. Yes, in or the MAD. <laughs> And then this, finally, we met with other PTA presidents on November 6th to discuss possible cluster events to increase spirit of the cluster and connection to the high school. Um, any questions about this particular report? If not, we're going to move forward to the uh, VP of Education report. Questions? Questions? And thank you again, Darwin. No questions. We're going to continue forward. If my mouse here would work. Okay, so now VP of Education. VP of Education is Sonali Sankar. She's not able to come tonight, but she shared this with us. She's connected with Ms. Somerville um, from the high school about other events programs that we can collaborate with to support the students. Um, she did share that the tutor doctor program was in October that was attended or registered with about 38 participants. And we are reaching out to them to support another SAT mock test in time for their spring SAT sessions. If there's any students here, please note that. I know there's at least one student on here. Connected with, we are, we are connecting also with Amy Smith about our college essay event in January, February. And then with Kenny Scholes about a special program for Clarksburg High School that he's actually doing at Albert Einstein High School, which is a four week session around college admissions. This one, there is a bit of a price point that we have to work out with, with the PTSA. The other ones are completely, um, they're donating their time and services. Any questions about this before we go to the treasures, please? No questions. We are going to continue. This is the treasure. I don't know if you can see this. Huh? One second. Ah, can you see this better? Okay, so this is just the um this is just an updated budget for the treasurer's piece. Ms. Nadia, did you want to speak more about that? We have a Nadia Square going on here. <laughs> you should have heard when the bank called me. Um, <laughs> no, <they're> like, <laughs> <laughs> no, you can go ahead, Nadia, and pick up on um, anything that we need to address. All right, thank you. So, so far, in terms of income that we have received, is $2,560. And the expenses is $2,665. A few of these are, are oh, I'm turning this down. The ones that are in italics, 
do you want um what would you prefer to have people come out of here or sound can, your computer yes, sorry i apologize yeah. <laughs> Right. Is it good? Yeah. Can you all hear me in the in the I'm gonna say WebEx? I was on work today. <laughs> Can you hear me in Zoom? I just didn't know if you want the sound coming out of here, but the computer's one, I guess. Oh. So. Thank you, thank you. Um, just to go over this one more time, we have um, the following that needs to be dispersed out, which is staff appreciation. Um, and then back to school, as well as the MCC PTA dues. We have increased in the memberships, which we're gonna have Ms. Carson here from our team go over in a bit. But um, technically the variance between the income and expense is $95. So we need to support, we need to work on supporting to get more um, of the income generated back to us. And then I hear there's a question. Oh, thank you. Next one here. This is the ah, my things. This is the treasurer support. We had an increase of thirty. We have an increase of seventy dollars from the members um, from the membership since October seventeenth, twenty twenty two. So again, total overall is five thousand ninety seven dollars. Nothing has been dispersed out. Balance on hand is five thousand ninety seven dollars and twenty seven cents. <coughs> We are working, at, we just filed the taxes today. We need to send out membership dues for the PTSA by the end of the month. And we are working with MTC PTA and Free State to ensure that we remain compliant. We are still waiting those updated account signers. The bank is giving us a lovely, lovely time to process things. <laughs> Any questions about the treasurer's report? No questions? We're gonna keep on moving forward. And thank you again to Nadia and Toby to assist with this. Mr. Wusu, your piece is going to be towards the presentation. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So hold your questions for Mr. Wusu at the end. Membership. You know, Angela's on the line too. So Angela, I'll go ahead and speak and then if you want to fill in any holes. But um, Nadia has the numbers right here. I actually checked right before we came. We have 128 now. <gasps> so um, Angela and I came over to the high school and spammed all the teachers and faculty here <laughs> with advertisements. Sorry. No. Um, so uh, we really are aiming towards a total membership of at least 200 by the end of the year. <clears throat> we talked, <clears throat> excuse me, back in September about in order to fully fund our budget, we would need over 1,300 members. And so we know that that's quite a challenge of the numbers right there. Thank you. Um, and so Again, we are aiming based off of past years um, and still an improvement an improvement at this point, actually. We're, we're doing really good. Um, we're trying to get 200 by before the prom, um, after prom. Exactly. So um, we'll do another membership push at some point, but right now our main focuses would be on um, other activities as far as fundraising and just trying to push for membership during those activities at, at this point. But um, again, I expect we'll probably have some type of drive in the spring. Thank you so very much. And does anyone have any questions for Carson or Angela from the membership team? I like the green. <laughs> we need to work on the teachers. <laughs> As many the students. We're going to say students, if you want to do after prom, you need to do Yeah. Right? <laughs> Um, any questions? No questions. We're going to move on forward. So our delegate, Lauren Moore, is not here today, but she went, she went to the October 25th meeting, I believe, uh, of the MCCPTA Delegates Assembly, and this is what she has to share here with us. Um, she is, um, I made this so small. <laughs> Oh gosh. So there's MCCPTA 2022-2023 Advocacy Priorities. I'm going to open this up. I will share the link here with you all if you would like to see it. I think I open this up here. There it is. So I'm going to share this link for you all if you would like to read it. <laughs> my chat. 
This is for the advocacy priorities for the MCCPTA for 2022 and 2022 to 2023. So one of them is funding CIP. They are prioritizing projects, safe routes, which is huge, sustainability and green schools, curriculum priorities is communication, COVID-19 response and recovery, staffing, and so forth. This is a 10-page report. You're more than welcome to review it at the time of your convenience. Let me pull up the other one. The other report she did is for the resolution on digital balance. That is this one here. Oops. I believe we have shared this at the prior meetings, but I will share this again. So both of these are gonna be voted on voted on and the tw January 2023 delegates assembly. And if there are any concerns or questions about these respective um, documents or the expect like the advocacy priorities or the digital balance, please do not hesitate to share to us. I'm going to give you the email link for the PTSA. And then we can bring this to Lauren so she can share this with her um, respective delegates team. We can do some level of a vote on it in next the next meeting. Any questions or concerns? If not, we're going to continue onwards. Cluster coordinator. So we have three cluster coordinators. Mini is actually our area VP, as well as a cluster coordinator. Yet the other cluster coordinators are myself and Teddy Wu. This is the cluster coordinator meeting for this month. And the first line item is that we will start meeting with the area director, Christopher Turk, MCC PTA screen time resolutions, and then meeting with area PTA presidents. Area meeting, area meeting, meeting with area director. This is supposed to happen apparently every month. Um, I believe this is a new um, focus for the area directors. So apparently all area directors are sending meeting requests to the various cluster coordinators throughout MCPS. And the goal of the meeting is to enhance the support for the cluster schools. Um, so we will start, I believe most likely January with Mr. Turk. No, my bad, maybe December. Um, the next one is the MCC, MCCPTA screen time resolution. So in the October delegates meeting, the MCCPTA has moved to consider it and bring it to the January 29th, 2023 delegates assembly for discussion and a vote. The reason why they have this resolution drafted up is because um, we believe that the issue of excessive screen time and digital balance is an important one that would benefit from debate and consideration by the delegates assembly. If passed, the resolution would empower the MCCPTA to speak on behalf of its full membership in advocating for screen time and digital balance policies. Meeting with cluster PTA presidents, the goal of the meeting is again to provide support to fellow PTA presidents within the Clarksburg cluster. The first meeting was on November 6, 2022. It was at Wegmans. Did not know how huge Wegmans is. <laughs> it is massive. <laughs> Um, and then we all brainstorm on how we can best collaborate to support one another. One of them is potential cluster festival, or maybe we can start, if that's going to be too big for this year, maybe we can start with like a community preview festival-ish during after prom. And we also want to create events that promote the interconnectedness of all the schools, especially leading up to the high school. That is it. Thank you so much for your support for the cluster coordinators. Any questions at all for this part of the meeting? I mean, part of the slides? Reports? No questions? We're going to move on forward. Next is unfinished business. Quarter four programs for focus after prom and school of excellence. So after prom, we connected with Mid-Atlantic Adventures. We can sign the contract now. If we all agree to it, should we do a vote for that? Yeah. Should we do a vote for the signing of the contract? <laughs> <laughs> I would say if we, if we have to, yes. otherwise. Maybe like an agreement of sorts. Okay. Yeah. Um, to sign the contract now to reserve the inflatables without having to provide the deposit because we're still fundraising for it. The deposit's going to be about 
1000 to $2,000. We did reserve the hypnotist for May 6th. Um, we also need to build a team and set up the budget and work out the timeframes by the end of November. First meeting November 20th, 2022. We re reconnected with MAD MCPD for Substance Awareness Assembly every 15 minutes, sponsorship and grants. So there's one grant. I shared it with the PTSA. I'm sharing it with you here. It was submitted on November 14, 2022. I submitted all that in like two hours. <laughs> Hopefully we get it. It is a um, reimbursable type of grant. So there's no advances. So we have to pay up front first and then they'll reimburse us. It's from the Collaboration Council grant from Montgomery County. There's also the Walmart grant, State Farm grants, and we also need funding support from various sponsors or individual contributors. So if you would like to support the After Prom team, it's an important program for the high school because it's it, um, it covers concerns about substance misuse and overuse, especially during prom season and graduation season. So it, and this will support the juniors and seniors of the high school who will be attending prom or who will not be attending prom, but they have a safe space to have fun and enjoy the night from 12 until 3 a.m. And that will be May 6th because prom is May 5th. Um, any questions about after prom? Is there a letter from last year that we can update? That we can yes. Send for, Thank you for uh, asking. For donations, right? Or asking yes. for sponsors. Yes, yeah, please like pick it apart and like tweak it and make it better. <laughs> if you want to join the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angela. <laughs> uh, next is School of Excellence. There is two School of Excellence being recognized in Montgomery County. It was Wheaton and I believe East Silver Spring Middle School. Now, those are down county. We need to get the School of Excellence up county. Clarksburg. There's two schools doing School of Excellence in Clarksburg. This is Clarksburg High School and Wilson Wims Elementary. So let's make sure we get this done, Clarksburg. School of Excellence is a recognition program that supports and celebrates partnerships between local PTAs and schools to enrich the educational experience and overall well-being for all students. Um, at a national PTA School of Excellence, families feel welcomed and empowered to support student success, and the PTA is a key partner for continuous school improvement. School of Excellence designation will help attract new action-oriented PTA members who want to focus on the issues that affect our children the most. Um, this is a year-long commitment to identify and implement an action plan for school improvement based on PTA's national standards for family school partnerships and informed by the PTA Center for Family Engagement. So at the end of the program will be the evaluation through the final application. So if the work that if we have worked and we have resulted in a stronger family school partnership, we will receive the two-year National PTA School of Excellence Distinction and Recognition. So it'll be like, I don't know, Mr. Rusu hung across the Festival. The big banner. Yeah. Absolutely. Goal. That's a goal. <laughs> we tried last year and then it just got a bit crazy at the end of the year. So let's make sure we can do it this year. This is the result of the um, survey. I want to make this bigger. So the first question is um, Who are we in relation to the school? Are we a student, teacher, or parents? The majority of the respondents are parents or caregivers. The first question is, does the school welcome and does the school create a welcoming environment? Oh, that's, does the school create a welcoming environment? And majority said yes, always. Second question is, does the school translate communications and provide interpreters as needed? Majority said, actually majority says unknown, but uh, the next majority is always. Does the school encourage families to volunteer? It's kind of split down the middle. Does the school show respect to all families regardless of differences? Majority says always. 33.3% says frequently. The next question, does the school communicate with families in multiple ways? Majority says always. Huge majority says always. Does the school provide clear two-way conversations about student progress or needs? 50% says sometimes. 33% says always. So as you can see, there is a great variability across the various um, questions. And what we've done here, there's 20 of them, so I don't want to go through each one. What we've done here, and I can share this with you all, is this is the final tally results. And this result shows that majority, a, lot, a great majority has always picked always from 
for, from these various questions. And these has been separated into the various standards, which is standard one is welcoming all families. Standard two is communicating effectively. Standard three is supporting student success. Standard four is speaking up for every child. Standard five is sharing power. Standard six is collaborating with the community. These standards is what we were gonna submit for the very first application. And based on the results here, when we analyze the data, significant variability lies in the supporting student success. 14 total for sometimes, 11 is frequently, and then 16 is always. The sometimes is what we're kind of focusing on. And we wanna turn those sometimes into always. So how are we gonna do that? Is we're gonna focus our plans to um, support this part of the programs, which is in, um, this is school involved parents and planning for students transitions, which is middle school, high school, post-secondary and careers. Does the school use technology to meet the needs of st today's students? Does the school include students as active participants in discussions of expectations and work equality? Does the school explain the academic standards and how the curriculum is connected to those standards? Now, granted, this is just a respondent from the parents, so there may be um, an, a need for us to communicate what that what actually the school is doing as compared to the perceptions that is out there about what the school is doing according to the parents or students or whomever. So this is where we're going to try to understand what this data is telling us. So um, from here, we will submit the School of Excellence application tonight. So we got a lot of work tonight. Um, and then we will be focusing on supporting student success. Any questions? And this, I believe, ties in with SIP that you shared the other day, right? Yes. <laughs> Any questions about the School of Excellence? If no questions, we're going to continue forward. And then the new business is about the food drives that we brought up earlier. Staff appreciation. I do want to ask, do we want to do it for November or December? I say December because we're already Ooh, today's oh, weather. This is me. It's me, Nadia. Um, okay. I I say December because we're so close to the middle of November, and then okay. the kids will be gone. It's hard to play catch up. Um, so I think maybe the first week of uh, December or even the second week. What okay, do you think? First week or second week of December. Okay, we can work with that. What is anybody's thoughts here? What kind of efforts are we thinking? I did not even say the first or second week of December. Yeah. Okay, so what are we thinking as far as what kinds of activities or efforts to... So last year, I'm so loud, I'm so sorry. Last year we did a, um, we did a, um, every single day there was something that we had for the teachers. Like one day it was it was pies, the other day it was um, chocolate, the other day it was, what was the other one? The other day was cookies, the other one was chips. What was the box one? Was that the cookies? Yes. <laughs> yes that was great. So do you want to do something similar for this year, kind of every day something, kind of make it like big and fun maybe for December? So please know we're going to do this for December something daily. Would that be something that would that you all would like to? I'm not going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Any input, please do share with us. You got my email. <laughs> And then please have, um, if you have any ideas on how we can say thanks to the school and the community, um, especially during this holiday season, please do not hesitate to let us know. The email for the PTSA is in the, it's in the chat there. Any questions or concerns? What week did you say? Sorry, what? what week did you say? Uh, first, first week? Of December, the first full week of December. Okay. First or second week? Why don't, you do the, why don't you do it the fifth? That way it's the first whole week of December. Yeah, so the first whole week of December. Mm -hmm. Okie dokie. So the next PTSA meeting is going to be January 17th, 2023. That was a very fast meeting. <laughs> okay, so. Um, any questions at all about what was shared in the meeting here before we get to the meat and potatoes of it all? 
no other questions? <laughs> okay, Dougley. We are now heading to the last part of it. So meeting technically is adjourned at 7.36. Um, and then now is the special topic presentation, which is the school safety and security, as well as the bridge, introducing the bridge to wellness program. Leading, leading the presentation is going to be Mr. Edward Abusu, principal of Parksburg High School. He will lead the school and safety and security part of it. And then for the bridge to wellness, we have the lovely ladies here from um, bridge to wellness team. Danielle Griffin, Care Manager, Astrid Medina, Youth Development Specialist, Tanya Orozco, Mental Health Specialist. So without further ado, Mr. Wusu, you have the floor, sir. I will stop sharing. Can everybody hear me okay? Trying to apologize to There we go. Um, let me share my screen. That's okay. Can you guys see the screen? Can you hear me okay? Okay, great. So um, I wanted to uh, first. Uh, Remind everyone, an email was sent out, um, uh, I guess, last week in regards to reminding people about this meeting, but also um, an email that all principals were to send out to their respective schools. So most likely, if you have children in elementary school, you got an email from the principal with an FAQ that talked about the different um, types of uh, emergency drills that we do or situations. Um, and then follow up to this. And so I wanted to kind of go over each drill and then also talk to you about the communication because I think the big piece is the communication. Um, a lot of this um, is was uh, implemented uh, after the incident at Magruder last year. Um, and so after an after action report, um, there was some things that the state um, indicated were some things that we should be doing in regards to ensuring safety and security, but also the communication. And that was something that the county wants to ensure that um, all schools have a unified plan for communication. Um, and I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> me, all this. Um, but it's hard to communicate when you're in an emergency, obviously. So um, I just wanted to kind of go over first the different types of drills that we do, um, and therefore kind of incidents that we try to uh, prepare for. Since I've been at Clarksburg, I think we've had an actual situation on drill in every one of these, except um, in um, we've had pretty much everything else. Um, so I just wanted to kind of go over all of you with you. Um, as you can see on the screen, we have uh, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, I'm sorry, six different types of drills that are listed there. A lockdown, an evacuation, reverse evacuation, shelter in place, Covered at full shelter as well as severe weather on shelter. <clears throat> um, so basically, we go over every all of these with all students and staff, pretty much from elementary through high school. But as things go, um, things change. <clears throat> um, students, parents, guardians, and staff have to inform of the expectations for each of the drill in the event of actual emergency. So that's what was uh, sent out to everyone um, in regards to this. Um, please know that all of our schools have fully are fully protected by automatic uh, fire sprinklers, and uh, the schools that are fully uh, protected, uh, there are drills for that. There are eight drills. We are fully protected, so we do have uh, five fire drills that we do in a year. Before these, we tend to every school had to do, but they reduce that. The state reduce that. Um, if you have an automatic uh, sprinkler system, then you can do five. Of these. Because you can still do um, all these other drills as well. Um, <clears throat> state requirement also requires that students that have an IP that um, is an individualized uh, education plan, that um, you have to have accommodations for every student. So, for example, students that are in wheelchairs um, that cannot get downstairs because you cannot take an elevator, there are designated staff that have to 
carry students down the staircase or wait to um, carry students to a designated area. So, um, not at this school, but at a previous school, there were students in a wheelchair, um, and there were designated staff members that, if you were out, there was money that was your backup, and there was a backup to that. Um, for example, to make sure that students could get out safely, and that also goes for staff as well. Um, so there's um, emergency and non-emergency is the reporting. Um, for the most part, um, I've gotten called when families see a police car in front of the building or an ambulance. Hey, what's going on? We normally don't call when there's an emergency in or sounds in the community and there's an emergency in the health room. That's when we change. So we've had many instances where uh, students have had an allergic reaction. For example, the latest one was a couple of weeks ago where a student smelled perfume. The smell, they walked in the hallway, smelled perfume. And that caused an allergic reaction, uh, skin reaction. So we have to get the F pen, and when you get the F pen, you have to call 911 uh, for that. <clears throat> so um, you'll be getting information like uh, an automatic message about that. So I don't want them to get all of a sudden one um, over, um, I'm going to say over alerted to that, but I also don't want people to get numb to it either. You get these messages of uh, emergency, whatever, automatically look at it and act well. It's coming every other day, every week. Then people try to stop reading those things. So, um, I want to um, make sure that people knew that. So, um, we do have to call non emergency, and there's a number that's listed there. And I will, I will share this part of the presentation as well. So, fire drills basically. Uh, listed there. Every classroom has a, a, a staff member has an emergency folder. In that folder is an attendance sheet. And so, just like at the elementary schools and middle schools, you practice going outside, trying to stay quiet as you go out, taking attendance while you're outside. If there are students that aren't in your class that you're missing, um, we we go around and we collect that, and uh, we we have to make sure that every <coughs> every location is um, every every staff member has been and student has been accounted for. Um, so that way, even in the drill, um, administration and security stay behind and quickly check bathrooms, quickly check um, any kind of uh, um, spaces where someone might be there um, to ensure that everyone gets out of the door. So that's even in the drill. Um, and then um, wait for the instructions. <laughs> in a directed evacuation, um, let's say you get a bomb threat or, or saying that there's some kind of incident in the main office. So we're not going to exit out the front doors. We may exit out the side and back doors. And so that's a directed drill. Um, and so we have to talk to those as well, um, moving at least 300 feet away um, from the building. So that means we, we go all the way to the grass and to Wims Road in the front of the building, all the way to the uh, <clears throat> parking lots and, and vice versa, trying to get as far away as we can. Um, and then we wait for further instructions. Um, a reverse evacuation drill. We're actually doing a reverse evacuation drill. I think tomorrow or Thursday, Monday. Um, and that is where we actually come into the building. So we have, for example, let's just portables and PE is outside. All of a sudden, there is emergency in the community. So the reverse evacuation drill is everybody's in the building. That's fine. But we have classrooms outside space. So they come in and we account for them as well. Again, we've had that it's this um, when when something has occurred. And this can also be when there's uh, identified weather safe issues. So tornado alerts or vice versa. Um, we've had those um, drills. Everybody on this floor, basically this whole second floor, would be evacuated downstairs. Um, and you'll see some other information about that. <clears throat> this, the severe weather, as you for those that are here, when you leave the building, you will look up and you'll see um, signs for safe areas for uh, weather alerts. I'm uh, sorry, weather safety shelter places. Um, and basically, kids and staff will be hunched uh, down on the ground, and we uh, kind of just we we as get all tight as best as we can, and we try to fit as best as we can all in the first level away from windows and or doors. Um, and uh, those areas are identified. 
Then there are shelter in places, um, shelter in places, excuse me. Um, basically, we continue with classroom instruction, but that means that something is going on in the rest of the building. A shelter can be called, let's just say, a staff member, as we've had, or a student has had, let's say, that allergic reaction, having a seizure in the middle of a hallway, right before the transition. We will stop the bell and say, there's a shelter in place, everybody stay where you are. And then we, we get, we, we, get the child or the staff member, if they can move to where they um, can get assistance. Sometimes we've had to call 911 and they come and it could take 20, 30 minutes where we're still in the shelter. Instruction's still going on, kids are where they're supposed to be, it's happens where they're supposed to be, but we've cordoned off the area um, for that. <laughs> um, that's just a simple example of that that can happen um, for those type of things, or if there's an emergency, outside of the building, and let's just say something happens at um, Harris Theater, and it's a community kind of thing, we will shelter work right in place here, but the construction was still the thing. The drop cover and hold, that's the only one that we have not done here at Clarksburg, um, and that's usually done in the case of um, an earthquake. <clears throat> but we, we do not go outside. Um, and then a lockdown occurs when there's life threatening imminent danger. And we actually had that here at Clarksburg actually last year. Um, and obviously, we sweep scan the outside areas. And so, this one has kind of caused angst um, amongst many in regards to like, we're supposed to get everybody out of the hallways, get everybody, hopefully, that you, know, that you can safely into your room. Um, and we, we kind of just locked down. <clears throat> and this it may lead to where we have to also defend or um, deny entry into the room. And so um, these are some of the things that we kind of uh, have to go through. Um, silencing electronics, um, making sure that doors are secured, lights are off, all that kind of stuff. And only taking attendance when it's safe and practical to do so and wait for further instructions. So, um, we've gone over many of these as best as we can with uh, staff and students. And each situation for all of these is um, can, can be different in different ways. And so we just have to adapt as best as we can. The more you practice, the reason why we do this, the more you practice that, you, that we can be when a situation occurs. We also recognize that staff and students, many of which have uh, severe anxiety issues. So when these things occur, um, <clears throat> We've had parents come to the, the building demanding to, to pull their children out um, and or staff demanding, to, I, I gotta go to my child's school or I gotta get out of here, whatever it is. And that's why we go through these things and to ensure that we can get support um, when we know what's going on um, with individuals. Um, this talks about the avoid, deny, and defend um, again to I explained that uh, you know you do whatever you have to do to protect yourselves and um, our students and our staff um, in different areas. And the, the main thing is to avoid the situation when at all possible. Then we move to denying um, entry, denying you know doing what you have to to deny um, and stand up whoever, and then you, you defend yourself with anything ever. <clears throat> and then also it really talks about this situational awareness, you know. Um, just, just knowing kind of what's going on around you, knowing when you enter a room where the exits are. So we, we've had to train kids. It's, it's, it's no longer not okay to train students to not know, you know, you, you need to know where the exits are. You need to know where you could hide. You need to know all these kind of things. Where the light switches are. You need to know all these different things um, with the windows and stuff like that. <clears throat> so we've gone over this with the students as well. And then we actually have a parent-child reunification process. Um, this can be frustrating for parents, um, but it's just being patient as, as best as can be to get their children in, in um, these severe cases. Just coming up and showing IDs. Um, we, we go through this process when you're checking into the building, but it's also uh, when you're picking up a child as well through this process. We won't release anybody until <clears throat> it's in. Um, appropriately uh, screen that you are the caretaker for the child that you get. Um, and then this is the male stage uh, line. 
The other piece that I wanted to share with you, um, just talking through, the computer hopefully didn't put up, is um, a communication plan. Um, and then I'll be done and take questions. Um, so the first part of the MCS communication plan was a letter was um, an email and communication was sent out by Dr. McKnight um, pretty much maybe about a month ago. It was sent out to all families centrally. And then um, the letter from the principal, which was uh, created um, in collaboration with central office and uh, schools, went out for me, and that's the one I referenced last week. And then during an emergency, um, if we have to, um, if there's a, an immediate emergency, we call 911, right? And there, there are different reasons why, as I explained. Um, <clears throat> you will get, families will get um, an automatic message that's, that's generated um, from either myself or my secretary saying that there's an emergency school, more information will be coming. And that's supposed to be set within 20 minutes, if it's safe to do so, within 20 minutes. Um, then um, we will, we will uh, if, it's have to, if it has to be turned over to the, the Montgomery County Police, we take a direction from them and uh, they will let us know how we can communicate. Um, so that's the, I think that's the frustrating part for families um, is that you got one communication that says something's going on at the school, it's a generic, generic kind of thing, and then you get nothing else for a little while. <clears throat> that's because usually the police have taken over and they don't want any other communication going out because if there's something going on in the building, they don't want that individual or individual to know what's going on. Or they don't want people all of a sudden coming to the schools. But it's counterintuitive. You set something out so people want to know and so they're going to come. So we, we, we understand that. And so the goal will be um, when it's safe to do so for me to communicate with our PTSA president, our NAACP uh, representative, as well as um, 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 our cluster coordinator, which is also my PTSA president. So um, those will be the, the two to three people that I will communicate with, that all schools will communicate with, um, probably, in, probably in a text, probably in a quick phone call, just say, hey, this is what's going on, and stuff can get put out that way. So because it, it, it's not supposed to be this big message because it's, it's a developing kind of thing and also the police. And then right after that, um, messages can go out to the community. Um, as, as necessary with the information that I have and or has been given to me. But usually when the police um, or, or emergency take over, they take over. When they're not here, I'm the incident commander. When the police come and they take over, they're the incident commander and then I am working with them as incident commander and then also going to my staff and giving information out. So um, I know we, it can be frustrating in regards to the communication piece. <coughs> Oh um, and then after an event, there's after communication, that could be right, there could be a staff meeting, there can be a parent meeting, there can be a parent email or summary. That's supposed to also happen as well. Okay. So that's all the information that I wanted to talk to you about. Um, I want to quickly ask if that's okay. Um, if there are questions that I can answer um, from any of you. If we can pause in the questions, okay. Mr. Wusu, so we can give the chance to the Bridge to Wellness yes. team to present. Yeah. Well, whenever. Yeah. Okay. Hi, there we go. Um, hi, okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Tanya Rosto, and I am the mental health therapist with Bridge to Wellness. Uh, Bridge to Wellness is a new program in Montgomery County, so now every single uh, high school in Montgomery County has this program. It, this program consists of a mental health specialist, a youth de developmental spe specialist, YDS, and a care manager. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about my role, and then, then uh, Danielle and Astrid will talk about their roles. So what I do is I do long-term psychotherapy. So I do one-on-one. -on -one. I do family therapy um, when necessary. 
Um, I have a, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the referral process. So they usually go through the counselors. Counselors have a meeting there and their whole being team meeting. They decide um, which course to take with the student and they can refer them to, uh, to us through the school social worker. Um, or if there's a student who uh, comes into our offices, we can do a, a self-referral as well. Um, uh, we're hoping to do group therapy soon. So I know we're hoping to do one on anxiety that will hopefully start in January. Um, and kind of to give a little bit based on what um, we were just uh, learning about, if there is a crisis, uh, what I have done. So I'm four days here at Clarksburg, one day at another school in Montgomery County. And if there is a crisis, um, depending on my cases, and if there's no crisis within my cases, I can potentially meet with students who are having a hard time. Uh, we do have a, uh, a conference room, and that could be kind of holding, like holding that as a safe, safe place for any students experiencing anxiety that day. Um, I've done it before at a different school and that um, uh, a great opportunity if they need to meet as a group or if it's more individual. Um, I, think, I think that's the general idea for my role. One of you want to continue? Yeah. Um, so my name is Dean Mel Griffin. I'm the care manager. So what I do is provide education and linkage to community resources for any students and their families. Um, so that can vary from anything like rental assistance, uh, food assistance, um, really ultimately anything in the community <laughs> um, that uh, you may feel is um, affecting um, student success. I'm here to provide that linkage to that service. Um, and then I'm Astrid, I'm the Youth Development Specialist, so basically I serve as an academic resource for students. This means providing mentorship or like check-ins just to make sure that they're staying academically engaged. I'm also able to help provide um, SSL opportunities if they need SSL hours. Um, I also sometimes plan fun activities when they have more school, so for example, um, I also work at another high school, so I'm only here Wednesdays, Mondays and Wednesdays, but at the other high school, we just had a field trip where we took them to the Sky Zone on October 24th. So it was really fun. So I'm able to kind of help, you know, students come together, be engaged, you know, meet other other students, part of the Clarksburg community. Um, and so, yeah. And I did want to add, um, Astrid and I both provide services in Spanish and English for students who uh, are strictly Spanish speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. We are now going to open the floor for any questions, concerns for uh, questions mainly for Mr. Wusu and then the Bridge to Wellness team. Does anyone have any questions? No questions. Questions. Any questions from anyone in online here? I have a quick question. This is oh, Nadia. Yes. Okay. Is um you said Spanish and English were available? Is it, there any other languages? Are there um you said Spanish and English? Are there any other languages? So. Um, those were the first languages they speak personally. Um, however, we do have access to um, a language line. Uh, so if we need to communicate in language or even um, sign language, um, we have access to do that with students as well. And families. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, you guys, for sadly, you know, there's still like a stigma attached to people seeking, you know, mental health assistance. So, how do you protect confidentiality for um, those who are seeking uh, counselor care through your services? 
um, confidentiality with the student. Sorry, I should say privacy, physical privacy, as far as like if you have a designated space, does everybody know that's where they're coming to get help from you, or is it somehow kind of masked in a way so it's not? Yes, yeah, so we're very careful when we're pulling students from classrooms. We will we'll never announce our title roles to protect that um, that privacy between the student. Um, we also do ask students their preferences if they prefer for us to pick them up from class, if they prefer for us to send them a quick message and ask if they can come, or we can uh, write in, uh, a pass ahead of time. So we kind of navigate what the student prefers, but we, confidentiality and privacy is a very, very important role for an uh, important aspect for us. So we do, uh, so for example, if someone asks like, who are you? Like we'll pull them aside and, you know, let them know like, you know, what we're doing, but we'll never announce it in a classroom. And um, yeah, any question, any other questions along that line? No, I appreciate okay. just, yeah, just knowing that that's something that's yeah. better. And Mr. Wusu, mm -hmm. you probably heard about, um, I don't think it's the so much to the high school, but the incident at Green Valley Elementary up in Peruvia and Frederick County, which I know Frederick County is different elementary school, but the issue there was a teacher had an issue um, and led students out of the classroom and took them, sadly, a mile from the school. This was within the last couple weeks. Um, and so I just was curious if there's any additional procedures, precautions, or anything that, that have to do with monitoring faculty as it relates to any of this, or anything that would come out of that that you want to see as that relates to um, lessons learned for our school or for Montgomery County, or if you want to see if anything coming out of the pipe from that. Um, that's a good question. So I'm familiar with it, especially when many of our staff members um, come from Frederick County and actually I think have children at that school. So um, I, for high school, I don't see necessarily that same instance. However, um, if there is a staff member that's having a mental break, and um, it's funny, it's not funny, but kids will let us know pretty quickly yeah. um, when when um, things are happening with staff members. Like, that's the difference with high school. Yeah, yeah, high school's a little, <laughs> little, <laughs> little off of that. Um, so, um, but if there's ever an instance, um, students can absolutely come and talk to us and um, we will intervene. Um, but for the most part, we security and admin are pretty much in hallways 95% of the time. So yeah. we, we see when, when there's movement in the building, plus we're always on, someone's always on camera somewhere in the building. That's great. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I did want to jump back. I didn't answer the time uh, The space, so we do have our offices, and we have so we have uh, our offices are one forty eight A and B, and plus we have a conference room. And so when students are in there, we close the blind. So and we have sound machines. So there are, there is privacy in the settings. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Does anyone have any other questions? No, quiet group tonight. Flip the camera around here. Um, anyone have any questions about the meeting tonight? Oh, yes, okay. That was really quick. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering how that worked. You know, if they had to teach your that's awesome. And we do have a, a flyer kind of with what our role is and more specific, like that's the kind of at least for me, like the population um because I'm mostly uninsured or underinsured. Um, but we do have our flyer. It's on the what is it on? This is the oh, then that was sent out. Okay, so it it is on there with our role and what we do. If anyone have any other questions, you sir in the corner, do you look like you have a question? Mm -hmm. okay. um, and I'm going to turn the emergency that I was going over. Okay, I'm just used to the meeting ending at nine. Somehow I breeze through that meeting earlier. Um, so I'm going to end.
the um, recording here. Thank you so much for attending the meeting tonight. I hope you all have a safe and healthy week and um, and we will see you in January. Thank you so much for attending. If you have anything you want to discuss line, you're more than welcome to. I'm just going to end the recording now. I'll cancel. No, I don't do that. Cancel. Huge thank you to the Bridge to Wellness team and Mr. Wusu for presenting tonight. We look forward to your continued partnership. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.